today's medical condition of the day, I'm going to discuss leukopenia. So to start off, let's talk about what leukopenia means. So it's a Greek word. Um, it comes from the Greek word leuko, meaning white, and the Greek word penia, meaning deficiency. So literally leukopenia is the deficiency of white, as in white blood cells. Um, you know, there's five different types of white blood cells, right? We remember this from anatomy, you didn't repress those feelings and the, everything that we learned. Great, I did, so I had to look it up. We got neutrophils, uh, eosinophils, basophils, lymphocytes, and monocytes. Um, and all of these basically are the body's natural defenses against, you know, infection, injury, poisoning, like anything you can think of that's foreign to the body. The white blood cells take care of it. Anything. There's a certain ratio of blood cells between, you know, the red blood cells, the white blood cells. There has to be a certain ratio that everyone should fluctuate around, per se. Um, so since I hate math, let's go to my sushi for my lunch to show you what exactly I mean. Okay, basically to describe the ratio of different types of blood cells, um, I'm gonna use my lunch from today. Yes, I got it from Frankie's. Yes, I only eat the veggie combos. And in fact, yes, I did buy three of these today because I was so starving. Okay, so you see, everyone should know that there's a certain kind of ratio of blood cells between red blood cells, white blood cells, the different kinds of neutrophils, basal cells, lymphocytes, everything, right? There has to be a certain ratio. And around this ratio, it can kind of fluctuate, but overall, it should kind of conform to a specific, you know, amount so that the person can be healthy. Basically, you can see here, you know, there's a lot going on, right? There's a ton of white pieces, carrots, um, avocados, cucumbers. This is just like your bloodstream. There's a ton of erythrocytes, your red blood cells, right? However, there should be a certain amount of white blood cells. For instance, there's a certain amount of avocado and cucumber for each of these pieces of sushi. You know, if there was too much or too little, then the ratio would be off and you would not have a good piece of sushi, all right? Just like if the ratio is off in a person's bloodstream, you know, problems are going to arise. In other words, it looks like this, you know? Because there's five different types of white blood cells, there's actually like five different types of leukopenia. For instance, if you are deficient in neutrophils, you can actually have neutropenia literally meaning deficiency of neutrophils. Now that being said, there's not a specific cause as to how leukopenia can happen. Really, it's just a ton of factors. Some people are just born with leukopenia. They just naturally have low white blood cell counts. Other times it can be with certain, you know, other illnesses, like people with leukemia, for instance, oftentimes end up getting leukopenia from like their chemo and radiation treatments. There's also a ton of factors. I have them written down here. Aplastic anemia, uh, any autoimmune disorders such as you know rheumatoid arthritis or lupus, cancer, like I said leukemia, sometimes taking antibiotics, infectious diseases like HIV, AIDS, like that can all lower your white blood cell count, and certain medications. Certain medications can lower your white blood cell count as well. Typically, you have to do a complete blood cell count. All they do is they just take some of that blood, right? And they look and they see how much of what is within that. Now, like I said, there's a perfect ratio you have to maintain. You know, if I remove some white blood cells here and all I'm left is with red blood cells, you're gonna have some issues. This is no longer a piece of sushi, it's a mess. In your body, it's no longer healthy, it's leukopenia. So a healthy person is anywhere between like 3,500 to 9,600 cells per microliter. Now, if you're under that blood cell count, white blood cell count, that's only for the white blood cells, then leukopenia might be present. Now that being said, once it's present, what can you do about it? Well, there's actually no cure. Um, there's several ways to treat it. However, you know, that also depends on the type of leukopenia you have. You know, certain medications can stimulate white blood cell growth, which is a good thing. And they can even treat any like bacterial infection, 
and that can even help like naturally kind of allow those white blood cells to regrow. Growth factors are another big thing. These can be administered to get proteins to produce more white blood cells. And sometimes even one of the simpler ways to treat leukopenia is just to take a treatment hiatus. For instance, lots of people that have like cancer when they're doing their chemotherapy and radiation that can alter the right, their white blood cell count. Whenever they're on like a hiatus for that, or the treatments may stop, or they go into remission, the white blood cells may begin to rise in numbers naturally. Moving right along, like I said, prognosis, there's not really a cure for it. White blood cells kind of fluctuate, like I said. So white blood cells can increase and that can like improve the condition, you know, and that's what the treatments that I just mentioned. Or white blood cells can actually decrease further, you know, if there's no treatment being administered and that can worsen the condition like really, really quickly, leading to life-threatening infections and possibly death. With some people, it actually can just remain stagnant, you know, if they don't change their lifestyle or like I said, maybe they're just born with a lower white blood cell count. Treatments, you know, you can lower the chances of infection. As for the OT interventions, like I said, there's no way to prevent this. You know, when you're an OT trying to treat leukopenia, it's kind of out of your scope. However, Lots of patients you might work with may have leukopenia because it coexists with like, a lot of other disorders. While you're thinking like, okay, if I am working with someone that has leukemia, you know, my patient's already feeling like nauseous. Maybe they have a fever, maybe they have some skin rashes, maybe they're really tired, they have lots of fatigue. Then it's also important to know, hey, they can be at risk for like infections. You have to remember all of that while I'm Ever you're working with a patient that's you know immunocompromised encourage like healthy diets especially people with leukopenia they recommend lots of fruits and vegetables resting and keep up the hand washing hygiene um, you know not necessarily going out in crowds where there's lots of sick people we all kind of get the gist from this whole pandemic from COVID perhaps the biggest thing that you can do is be very very careful don't let the person get like any kind of scrapes or abrasions um, because these can be a really easy way to be at risk for infection. 